Just eager, strong performance, especially in that first set today. Just talk us through your thoughts on the match. Well, for sure, you know, the match started well for me. I uh, played with, you know, really big confidence. Um, in a second... In the second set, obviously it got uh, more tight and, you know, I was down one break, but I'm happy that I could really, you know, stay focused and I had plenty of chances in uh, each of her service games to break back, but I knew that um, somehow I'm going to use <laughs> um, one of these chances and that happened, so I'm happy that I won this second set. Hi, Ika. Hi. You've mentioned a couple of times for people to come out uh, to the games in Beijing and here. Uh, today was a number two of the world against number three game and the stadium wasn't full either. What do you think the WTA can do to help the players get more exposure and have people come out to the games? Well, honestly, I think there's plenty they can do. Um, it's a pretty weird situation where we have you know meetings with WTA and we kind of <laughs> explain to them um, what should be done sometimes, you know? So um, for sure they, there is potential, you know, to, to work on that. Uh, obviously they decided late, you know, that we're gonna play here and um, and for sure, you know, the marketing sh should be better. Uh, so it's a shame that we don't have full stadium and we don't have like, a, we can't really feel like we're on a, like a tennis kind of celebration, you know, for the whole week. Um, but it is what it is, and hopefully for the future, uh, there's not going to be any more situation like that, and they're going to work to improve that because, um, because you know, we're doing our best on every tournament and um, on Grand Slams. You know, we have full stands basically from um, even sometimes, you know, second rounds here. Um, it's it's much different than sometimes on WTA tournaments. So there's a room for improvement for sure. Hi, Iga. Congratulations for this win. Thank you. And my question is, and how do you evaluate this year for you as players uh, with your relationship with WTA? Because we, we have um, read and we have listened all this season that uh, some kind of difficulties like the, the payments, the, the, so now with the conditions of the venue here in Cancun. But in your opinion, how, how has been this relationship between you players and the WTA all this year? How did you evaluate it? Thank you. Well, obviously, um, I'm on tour for four years, but uh, this is the first time that we are actually, I mean, the top players um, and lower ranked players as they as well they would be. Um, we are really kind of united to have an impact and to do something, you know, because yes, we are not happy with, with some things and we want to, you know, um, for sure, you change the, the schedule for next year. Um, we're going to have much more of mandatory tournaments and it's going to have a huge negative impact on our health and well-being and um, basically, um, yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> I'm, I'm 22. Yeah, am I 22? Yeah, I'm 22 and um, I played, you know, two the, of the most intense seasons in my life and I already feel like um, it's gonna be tough for me to like continue for so many years ahead if WTA is gonna you know go that way to increase the amount of mandatory tournaments and um, most of the tournaments are gonna be uh, 1,000 tournaments are gonna be two weeks in future years, which is also gonna kind of affect our time at home and time in, in between the tournaments. So um, so I feel like. Um, Everything is just based, you know, on wanting to have more and more, but not really taking care of our well-being and health. There are some things um, that WTA could change for us um, without an impact, for, you know, on, on the tournaments and the things that I, they already agreed with the tournaments. So um, hopefully these changes are, are going to come and we're gonna find a compromise where everybody is kind of happy, you know? Um, but yeah, for sure, only talking about the relationship, I would say um, I really feel like we, me and the other players, um, like Ons, Coco, 
Um, I mean, the players that were here, actually, like everybody, <laughs> and also some players uh, that didn't qualify for the finals, um, we are really, really united and we think the same way. So most of us, even the young ones, the, old, the older ones, we all know that this is, you know, kind of not good that we're going to have more mandatory tournaments. And um, so we want to really, really have an impact because when it's going to happen, it's going to stay forever and it's going to get worse. So um, hopefully we're going to be able to, to push. Hi, uh, for for moments, you made look so easy the game against uh, Coco, but what was the most difficult part for the victory? Well, um, well, I would say this match like wasn't uh, constant in terms of you know the level. So for sure, you know, adjusting to um, to everything that happened on court was the most important thing. And it took me a while because I was break down, you know, in second set. But I'm happy that I could actually you know problem solve a little bit and find a way to win these last games. Um, and the key was I don't know maybe being consequent um, and not really focusing on the score, but really just staying, sticking with the plan and that worked in the first set. Next question in English. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And just on that, in terms of the match, there was a few volleys that you were able to, to put down today that, that got, I, mean, I think Martina Navratilova was on the commentary. She was quite impressed. Um, <laughs> just. I know that that's an aspect of your game that you're trying to improve on and everything like that. H how are you seeing the progress and the confidence change as you kind of, yeah, focused on trying to get that aspect of your game short up? Well, for sure, I feel like, you know, I'm progressing, you know, that way in terms of my volleys. So um, I have a lot of confidence that also in the future it's going to get better. Yeah, I had like three volleys today that I really played with, you know, a lot of control and two a little bit without. but. Um, but it's a huge improvement because, you know, one year ago I would have uh, five with, without control. So um, I'm also feeling, you know, um, how I can play on practice courts and, um, yeah, it just feels like I actually learned the proper technique. And sometimes, obviously, when, when it's a tight situation during a match or it, it's a little bit stressful, um, you need to kind of focus on it more, uh, which maybe I didn't do in these two volleys that I missed today. But um, overall, I'm really happy. And overall, I, I can be more natural on the net. And I know kind of more often what to do. So that's great, because you don't want to think about you know every technical thing when you play. Hey, uh, just one question, and it's of tennis of the court. Uh, what do you think about Matthew Perry? Uh, he's he passing away last weekend. I know we all know that you exchanged some tweets with him. Uh, what are your thoughts? And we know that you also are a big friends fan. Yeah, well, obviously, um, we never met. Um, so I don't know him in person, you know, but I read his book last year. And um, I've been watching Friends. And you know, this TV show was um, kind of a thing that kept me I don't know, not lonely in my teenage, teenage years, you know. So I really have a lot of sympathy for the work that he has done and to kind of, I know that um, his life was, was kind of tough on him and it wasn't easy. And obviously it's really, really sad um, that he passed away. Um, and yeah, well, he was really kind of loved by everybody and his fans, so, um, so, I mean, I don't know what to say, honestly. I've never <laughs> had a question like that on press. Um, I, I was, like, from only my perspective, I was just really sad uh, when it happened. And I hope his family and, you know, his, his friends and people that he worked with um, are going to have some peace to, like, just go through everything peacefully.